Hey everybody, and welcome back to another impromptu review. I'm Ryan Reed. Every once in a while, there's a movie that comes out that just feels like it's going to do horribly, no matter what. It can have an amazing cast, it can have amazing special effects, whatever. It just doesn't look like it's going to work. And recently, we got one of those. The 2019 reboot of Hellboy uh, had everything going against it. Uh, it was replacing a series that has a very strong cult following with the Guillermo del Toro films. It didn't have Ron Perlman coming back. A lot of the stuff that people loved about the first ones was gone. And I'm a huge fan of the Guillermo del Toro films as well. Uh, to be fair, I'm not as well versed in the actual comics as I'd like to be. I have read a little bit of them, but not as much as I'd like. That said, the Guillermo del Toro films, I do love. I've seen both of them. I own both of them. I love both of them. I know that they have kind of a cult following status. Um, they didn't do amazingly well at the box office, which I think was one of the reasons they wanted to reboot it, try and get the franchise up and running um, a little bit differently. Um, plus, there were some disagreements behind the scenes. But I'm not looking at all of that. Uh, I want to take all of that, put it aside, and just look at this movie, Hellboy 2019, and look at, is it really that bad? Admittedly, when the trailer came out, even before that, when it was announced it wasn't going to be Hellboy 3, I was like, eh, okay, I'm already on the fence. Uh, and then they announced that, you know, like I said, Ron Perlman's not coming back, all that stuff. And I was like, all right, more and more, I, I'm not into this. Um, they did get David Harbour, who I do really like on Stranger Things, to be Hellboy. I think he's a very fitting Hellboy. But there were just a lot of things stacking up against this movie. Um, they were going for like a grittier R-rated version which, again, not being super well-versed in the comics, um, I don't know if that's 100% accurate uh, to the content within. But it, at the same time, just being an outsider, it felt like they were just going gritty for gritty's sake. We're going to make it a hard R movie and lots of gore and swearing and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's awesome. Sometimes it's not needed. So that was all kind of... I was hesitant about that. Uh, then there was a lot of behind-the-scenes troubles and, you know, apparently arguments between the producers and the director and all kinds of stuff like that. And then on top of that, the trailer dropped, and I was like, this does not look good. This trailer is terrible. I, you know, it was, it was just not great. And then when the film actually came out, it was panned by critics. I think originally the weekend it came out, it had, I remember it had an 11%. And I was like, wow. Yeah, even now it has a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes uh, with an audience score of 53%. And that kind of brings me to my point. Again, this movie was just being panned by critics. It didn't do well at the box office. Everything about it looked wrong. I had no interest in going to see it. A lot of people I know had no interest in going to see it. And a lot of people I know who were fans of the first few films, and even the comics, just didn't care. They didn't want to go. So finally, it's out on Blu-ray. Uh, it came out a little bit ago. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. I want to see if this is actually as bad as it seems. And so I sat down, and I watched it, and... Honestly, I don't think it is. There are a lot of problems with this movie, but I don't think it's worth the 17% that it's holding at Rotten Tomatoes. I don't think it's worth panning as much as the critics did. So let's kind of dive into it, talk about it a little bit. First things first is the casting. Like I said earlier, David Harbour is a great cast for Hellboy. If you're not going to get Ron Perlman back, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to try not to compare this to the Guillermo del Toro films. I'm going to just make it its own thing, but every once in a while you kind of got to look if you're not going to get Ron Perlman back, David Harbour is a fantastic replacement. He's great as Hellboy. In the movie, he his performance is great. He's got that sarcasm that Hellboy has. His delivery is great. He even makes jokes and really bad lines that should not work. He makes them work fairly well. He is really, really solid in the movie. Uh, and I like his performance a lot. If we ever did get a Hellboy back, I'd be happy, or ever did get another Hellboy in this particular universe, I would be very happy to see him back in the title role. The rest of the cast doesn't fare quite as well. Uh, the side characters really don't have a lot of time to develop. They, they throw a lot, and we'll get to this, but they throw a lot of plot points at you and a lot of exposition, and a lot of exposition just to be like, this is who this character is, this is this, this is that. And because of that, I don't care about the rest of the characters. Um, and I want to care about them, 
but the movie doesn't care about them. So because of that, it doesn't work. I, there's no connection with the rest of the characters. Even when Hellboy, our protagonist, is supposed to care about them, we as the audience don't. And that'd be okay, because it is a Hellboy movie, but they are still trying to fit all these characters in, and so because of that, it just doesn't work. The other big problem I have with the movie is Ian McShane. He plays the professor in this one, the one that raises Hellboy. And I like Ian McShane. I like him a lot in a lot of things. But here, he's just miscast. They went for a father-son relationship where they argued. And I don't buy that Ian McShane ever cares about Hellboy. It never comes through in his performance, even moments where he's supposed to be sentimental. Again, I went. I understand they're going for a more, like, hard-as-nails dad. You know, he doesn't really show his emotions on his sleeve. But it just never reads that way. It reads like Ian McShane is getting a paycheck. So <laughs> that casting is way off. The rest of the cast is fine. The, the problem is really coming from the character development. Um, but David Harbour as Hellboy is really, really... As for the rest of the movie, it definitely has problems in all kinds of areas. First and foremost is the script. Uh, from what I understand, they took several runs of the comics and tried to put them all together in this two-hour movie. And it does not work. There is way too much going on in here. I had no major problems with the first half of the movie in terms of the plot development. However, the second half throws that all out the window and just tries to cram as much into it as humanly possible. And because of that, it starts to feel like an exposition dump instead of the plot developing naturally. And I won't go into spoilers in case you do want to see the movie, but it's a lot of, oh, you have to do this because this is your destiny, and this is this, and this is this, and this, and this, and this, and this. There's, there are scenes in this movie where they go visit a character we have not established, and all of a sudden they're an exposition dump character. There's been no foreshadowing about this character. There's nothing. It's just, by the way, here's this new character. He's going to tell you about everything that's going on, and uh, good luck to you with the rest of the plot. And that happens a lot in the second half. And I don't know what happened. I feel like maybe there was, again, because of the behind-the-scenes troubles, maybe there was a longer cut of this movie. Like, maybe there was, like, a three-hour cut. And that's what this movie feels like it needs. It, uh, in all honesty, it feels like it needs to be a three-hour movie where they let the plot breathe. Because then they could kind of set characters up and move things along at a better pace. And even though the movie would be longer, it would feel more fleshed out. It would feel more developed. And... Because they're trying to cram everything into a roughly two-hour runtime, that doesn't happen. And so the second half just races to the finish line, but we lose a lot of the important elements, like talking about who characters are or setting up important plot points. Even the climax of the movie feels very anticlimactic. It felt, feels like they're building to something, and then they just are like, oh, we're out of time, great, this is what happens, and the end, bye. And... So that I had major issues with. The other issue I had is with some of the dialogue. Some of it is really bad. It's really poorly written. Um, and it's not so much about jokes not landing. Sometimes that happens. But in a movie like this, with a, with a fast pace, you can forgive that. You can be like, all right, joke didn't work, whatever, moving on to the next thing. This movie really, really has some major dialogue problems. Whether it's, like I said, exposition that just d doesn't work, or it's some of the jokes. Uh, the other problem is with this R rating they're trying to go for. There are times where the movie doesn't naturally feel like it's an R rated movie. Um, and what I mean by that is someone will swear or something gory will happen or whatever. And that's fine. Like I'm all for a crazy R rated movie, you know, whatever. That's okay. But it feels like someone is just swearing to swear or someone gets killed just to kill somebody on screen and it doesn't organically feel like it comes from the movie like it feels like this totally could have been a pg-13 movie but they felt like oh let's make it an r-rated movie to appease fans i guess i again i don't know maybe the source material was a lot more gory if you know please comment below tell me inform me is the material a lot more of a hard r you know, material? Or is it somewhere in between? Is it between the PG-13 Guillermo del Toro ones and this hard R version? But because of that, someone will drop the F-bomb, and it'll be like, 
it will not naturally come out of someone's mouth. It just feels like someone wrote a sentence and then was just like, we're going to put an F-bomb in here. Instead of utilizing the fact that, yeah, we have an R rating, people can swear. It, it, it feels like kind of like when a teenager discovers that they can swear or whatever. And they're like, oh, I can say, I can say bad words now. Or I can say whatever. And it, it, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. That doesn't work. The other thing about the film, obviously, it is a big special effects superhero style comic movie. So how do the effects hold up? Some of them are really, really well. Uh, there is a character in the movie who is a, a boar. He's a pig. And his effects, I thought, were really, really solid. Um, I, I don't know if he was a blend, a blend of practical and CGI or just all CGI, whatever. But he looked really good. Some of the other creatures in the movie and some of the other effects in the movie... Are really well done. There are pra practical effects, makeup effects, prosthetics. Those all look good. I'm not a big fan of the Hellboy design itself with like really high cheekbones. I feel like there's too much going on in his face. Um, because the Mike Mignola comics are very stylized but very simple, you know, in, in his artwork style, not that the comics are simple, but his artwork is very, very hard edges and simple elements to make things pop. And so I think the Hellboy makeup has a little too much going on. It didn't bug me that much in the movie, but when you see still frames or just moments like that, it's a little, little, little busy for my taste. But um, some of the other practical effects are amazing. However, there are moments in the movie where the CGI is just bad. It's really bad. Like late 90s, early 2000s CGI bad. Uh, and I don't know what happened. There's a couple effects companies that worked on this movie. So, you know, maybe maybe there's some issues there. Or maybe they brought in extra companies to try and help with the workload on all the CGI shots. Um, and maybe time constraints were there. Maybe they were rushed and so their work wasn't as solid as it could be. That happens. Sometimes it's not the company's fault. It's the producers or it's the filmmakers. And it's like, we don't have time to make this better. Please, like, make this as good as you can. But yeah, some of the CGI, and that's really distracting, especially when it's up against really good CGI. It's not like the CGI is terrible throughout the whole thing, in which case you can kind of forgive it, but in this film, it's hit or miss, and that's really distracting and really problematic. The film does have a lot of style to it. Its cinematography is great. I know there were articles I read that said the original director of photography was fired, and they brought in this new person, and again, I don't know about some of that behind-the-scenes trouble that was going on. But what we got is very stylized. There are moments where there's a lot of cool tracking shots during fight scenes where it's all one big take, or there's just a very interesting visual style. You know, the art direction, the cinematography, all those things together come together and make a really, really awesome looking movie. It pops. It's very visually appealing. Also, the choreography of the fight scenes is typically pretty good. Because there are these long takes, the action scenes are really cool to watch. And that, coupled with the style just makes for really, really appealing segments throughout the whole movie. But just looking at Hellboy 2019 as a film itself, is it worth 17%? No, not at all. Not even close. Is it a great movie? No, it's got flaws. It's got major flaws. A lot of scripting issues, some effects issues, pacing issues for sure. And even though I've said a lot of negative things, that makes it sound like I hated this movie. I did not. I had a good time watching it. Again, I didn't enjoy it as much as the Del Toro films, but that's also because I like Guillermo Del Toro as a filmmaker. I like his style. I like the way he tells his stories, and I think those movies are very whimsical. This said less of that. It was, again, trying to be more hardcore, R-rated, and because of that, it falters at times. But as a whole, it's fine. It's solid. It was worth the two bucks I paid to rent it. In fact, if I found it for five, ten bucks on Blu-ray, I'd buy it because it's it's a great movie to just pop on in the background when you're like, eh, I just kind of want to have something on. It's a great popcorn flick. It's great to put on on a Friday night or whatever when you just want to watch a movie. So yeah, I recommend it. I recommend it in that regard. If you are not a super fan of, you know, violence or swearing or things like that, you know, maybe stick with the other ones. Or if you really love the, you know, Guillermo del Toro films, you know, maybe... Maybe you won't dig this as much, but just putting all that aside and looking at this as a movie, if this had been the first Hellboy movie, totally passable, totally enjoyable, 
we just have a history of it, and so people tend to be harsher critics because of that. But give it a shot. Also, if you're a fan of the comics and you know these individual runs of the storylines that they did, please comment below. Tell me, is this a good adaptation? Is this closer to the Hellboy source material? Do you like this as a comic fan, or do you prefer the other movies? Let me know. Also, if you like this type of content, please subscribe. We have all kinds of videos. We have more impromptu reviews on some other films that I've seen recently. On top of that, we have Fright Films, which is my horror film review show. We also have the Paranormal Tapes, which are true stories of the supernatural from people I know, uh, plus some other content. So subscribe for more content like that, and I'll see you next time.